Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about jerk baits and we're going to really focus in on technique. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about specific brands and colors and sizes. This is more about technique and we're going to really talk about fishing these through the fall and winter months in heavy submerged vegetation. Now this is a very tough video for me to talk about because there are so many small factors that I think most anglers don't think about. What I'm going to urge you to do is watch this video in its entirety because some of the things that we talk about at the beginning of the, uh, the video, like how the bait is made, how the weight transfers work in them, modifications that some people do, it's very important in the big picture because when you get these baits into operation, especially around vegetation, it is extremely important on how these set up in the water. We're going to talk about specific techniques that you should be using when you are fishing submerged vegetation. So let's start off with the bait itself. And I am not a big fan of doing a lot of bait modifications other than sometimes I will modify the hooks on these. And on this particular bait here, I, have, uh, I do have uh, modified hooks. We'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, let's talk about the bait itself. And this is, I'm gonna use for demonstration purposes, one of the most popular baits um, in the United States, and it's the Mega Bass uh, Vision 110. I think this is a 110 Junior, just a smaller version of the 110. But uh, this is one of the baits that I feel comes with a pretty light hook. We'll talk about changing out hooks on this and, and the way that I do it, why I like to change the hooks out, and why I, in a lot of cases, don't like to change the hooks out. But first of all, let's talk about the weight transfer system in, in this bait. Now, what this bait has is it has if um, balls. You can hear these baits, or hear these balls rattling up and down. And I don't know exactly what they're made of. Some of them could be made of tungsten. They could be made of lead, uh, a hard uh, ball of some type. But if you look in this bait, there are two large balls right up here and two very, you know, the size of BBs. What this does is it add weights. It adds weight to the bait and it's a transfer system. So when you cast this bait, if you, a lot of times you'll hear them snap and it, maybe I'll, you hear that? snap that's the, tra the the weights in the bait transferring and they generally transfer from somewhere right around uh, the upper third portion of the head down to we'll see how how this one transfers right down into the tail now what that does is it makes this bait extremely aerodynamic because it when you throw this bait out and cast it it doesn't cast head first the weights transfer to the back of the bait in the, in the tail of the bait, and it makes the bait go this way into the water. Extremely aerodynamic. It also uh, helps this bait to um, uh, build up bait speed. The heavier the bait, the more power you put into the cast with a heavier bait, the farther you're going to be able to cast it. So these weight transfers add weight to it, they make it more aerodynamic and it gives you a longer cast. The problem is when this bait hits the water and these weights are back in the tail, it sits just like this. And to me, this is a dead duck. We'll, take, we'll have some uh, underwater video of this hopefully playing when, when I'm talking about this. This is a dead duck. It doesn't move. It's very unnatural and it's just not something that attracts the fish. I'm going to talk very briefly about the hooks on this and I'm going to use a little bigger, a little bigger bait here. Uh, I have modified hooks on this. It is extremely important when you start to modify the hooks that you look at the weight of the hook that you are modifying or, or, or switching out with. Heavier weights are going, can throw these things out of kilter and really cause a lot of problems. The first thing that I'll say is the most important hooks on this bait are the front hook and the back hook. A lot of guys will just remove the middle hook and that's fine. It'll make them a little lighter, but they generally, um, without that middle hook, they won't, uh, uh, sink as far, but they'll, they'll pretty much twitch and, and wobble and, and have the same action as with three hooks. What you don't want to start doing is removing the back hook or the front hook. If you're going to remove a hook, remove the middle hook. If you are going to add a heavier hook, 
I generally add that hook to the front of the bait and what that does, it drops the bait just a little bit and it keeps it in the water. It doesn't really sink it a whole lot. It changes a little bit about um, how the bait sets up and how it flutters to the, to the bottom. Um, it'll go a little head first, kind of like this rather than, than uh, level. So a little heavier weight in the front is not going to hurt a whole lot. If you start taking um, a 2x or 3x heavy hook and putting them on these things, they really lose a lot of their action. So my suggestion is when you look at changing out the hooks, you be really particular in the size, keeping the same size that you have on here, this, clo as close to the same weight, and the length of the hook shank. If you use a long shank treble hook, a lot of times your hooks will start to get fouled with each other. So you have to be uh, really um, thoughtful and mindful of the size, the weight, and the hook shank on these. With the uh, split rings, Generally, if a, a little better split ring is not going to add that much weight to the bait. So split rings and hooks are the only things that I will modify and I will be very careful when I am modifying these baits uh, to make sure that I don't have them dropping like a rock or maybe floating and not uh, being able to catch uh, the lip when you start to twitch it so it, it does, so it undulates and jerks properly once you start the retrieve. So think about that when you're doing any modifications to these baits. We talked about a, uh, having um, a light hooks out of the box for, let's just say, mega bass. What I do with the smaller baits and the lighter hooks, I will fish um, these on a spinning rod. And I, on this one, I have, um, I think, 30 pound braid with about 10 feet of, um, of uh, mono leader. It's really important if you have lighter hooks to use a lighter rod, um, uh, especially a spinning rod that has a little more of a parabolic bend, so you don't have those jarring hook sets. If you have a jarring hook set with these light uh, hooks that, that a lot of times the Mega Bass and some of the uh, top end baits come with, you're going to start straightening out hooks. The other problem where, where most people have when they um, start to weaken the hooks or damage hooks or once they catch a small fish and they're using a um, oh what do we got where's my uh, you start to use a, um, uh, a pair of pliers and you're grabbing those hooks that's when you start bending hooks most of the time so be really careful when you start catching fish on these especially with the light hooks to not try to twist them out but just kind of kind of grab them and pull them out be very careful with that Um, one of my mentors when I was um, coming up was a guy named John Maynard, and he was a, a salmon guy. But John used to say, big baits catch big fish, small baits catch all fish. You put this in front of a, ba uh, a four, five, six pound bass or this bait, if it's fished properly, they're going to take either one of these baits. Catch a hundred fish on this bait, a hundred fish on this bait, and you're probably going to catch bigger fish on the bigger bait. But if you're just looking for bites, you know, stay with the, the 110 or the 110 junior sizes and, and they'll work fine for you. You will have to use a little different rod as the baits get bigger. This is a Corrado, Shimano Corrado. I think it's a seven foot two uh, medium spinning rod and it's paired perfectly with about 30 to 40 pound braid and about 10 feet of mono leader, eight pound great jerkbait rod out here. As you get to maybe, and this, I have the 110 Junior on here, or the smaller um, uh, Mega Bass. As I get to the bigger uh, 110 uh, uh, standard, uh, this is a Daiwa. Again, it's about a seven foot, seven foot two rod. I've got it paired with a loose reel, and I have straight uh, eight pound mono on this. It's a great jerkbait rod, and again, if you have light uh, hooks, that rod has a lot of parabolic bend in it, and it doesn't straighten out hooks. And the last rod I'll talk about, it's an old, old uh, NRX rod. This is a medium seven foot two. It's got a little more backbone. Still got a fairly sensitive tip. It's an old one. Um, a lot of guys will use glass rods, uh, you know, to protect the hooks. But those are the three rods that I use, and they'll cover about 90% of my, my fishing.
These are all the baits that I, that I use 99% of the time. There's about 12 baits in each one of these boxes. I could probably get away with, with uh, one box. Most of my baits are are very muted colors. This is blue back, uh, light chartreuse. I like chartreuse and base. Chartreuse and blue back seem to work really well with me. Uh, for me, I've got the just the standard white that works great. And I do have some crawdad color uh, jerk baits. But any anything that that you know resembles the color of bait in your particular water is going to be fine. Okay, let's talk a little bit about vegetation. And what we have here on the delta is actually Elodea or Agiridensia, Brazilian pondweed. Uh, it's good to know a little bit about this stuff. So number one, when you have this in a system, it generally grows in about four to eight feet of water. That's when it's at its healthiest, when it's growing vigorously. It's very green and it's very um, brittle. I mean, it breaks real easily. As it's growing in that four to eight feet of water, it is very, very healthy. If you are fishing in on a flat where maybe it's only three or four feet uh, of uh, depth, it's still going to grow, but it tends to not be as healthy. And I take, I've taken this particular piece of hyacinth from a area that was um, about four feet deep. Now you can see the very top where it's growing. Uh, it does have a little bit of mat on it. It's, it's pretty healthy, but as it gets down to the root, and this could grow 15 feet, but it'll mat right on the surface. But when it starts to do that, it starts to deteriorate, and it starts to get this stuff that we call witch's hair, which this is what you get on your, on your uh, hook. Fishing jerk baits in shallow water with vegetation that has this type of matting on it is going to give you a lot of problems. This stuff here, as long as you're fishing over the top of it, these baits can hit the top and break them off, break off the vegetation very cleanly. So it's really important as we get into this uh, fishing demonstration to know where that LED is, how deep it is under the water, and in what condition it's in. That's going to give us big clues when it comes to fishing technique, and that is important because the fish hold very close to this. You see vegetation, you don't want to get hung up, you throw it 10 feet outside of the, uh, uh, the vegetation line, you're probably not going to get bit a whole lot. But if you know how to fish these jerk baits through this type of vegetation without getting them hung up every time you throw out, you're going to start catching a lot of fish, you're going to catch bigger fish. So let's start fishing now and we'll talk about how this stuff grows, how it creates troughs, um, and, and where the fish hold on it. Are they on the inside? Are they outside? on the outside? Are they down deep in the middle? We're going to talk about all of that and we're going to talk about how to get that bait through this type of cover. Let's talk about three quick techniques that you're going to need to know and hopefully master that's going to bring you to that next level of jerkbait fishermen. These three things are really, really, really going to help you catch a lot more fish. Number one, learn how to quickly and efficiently take this bait from what we call the dead man position into the righted position where it's going, going to start working for you. That's number one. Number two, we'll talk about learning how to fish baits efficiently through vegetation. Number three, we'll learn how to keep contact with the bait. After we're retrieving it, giving it the pops and jerks, how to keep contact with the bait. That's very important. Okay, I'll show you how to bring this bait from the dead man position into the working position. And remember, the dead man position is when we cast the bait out as it enters the water and the weight transfers go down into the tail and the bait is just hanging there in the surface film easy to do what we're going to do is as the bait is just hitting the water we're going to engage the reel and we're going to take a couple uh, cranks of the uh, the reel handle so we throw it out hits the water we take two cranks and just give it a little twitch what that does it takes the bait from this position to this position once we have it in the working position then we could twitch it we can pop it we can reel it in and it's ready to go so think about it, when the bait's in this position, super unnatural. It hits the water, 
you got a fish that comes up and every fish within 10, 15 feet of that bait is aware of that bait hitting the water. They come up, look at it, it's sitting in that dead man position, they turn away and they're not gonna bite it. You're training that fish not to bite that bait. We're gonna talk about working baits through vegetation. I've made a long cast and I'm hopefully going to get this down stuck in some vegetation. Okay, this is what we're going to do. As we're working this bait back, and if you can see the tip of my rod, I'm stuck in vegetation. Now what we don't want to do in this situation is give it a big jerk and try to pop it through there. Because what that does is it pulls the weight of the bait away from the target that we may have just cast to. So if there's a clump of vegetation and we think there's a fish around there, we want to keep the bait around that, um, around that, uh, that target zone. So instead of giving it a big pop, what we're going to do is we're going to point the rod tip right at the bait and we're going to just pop it through with the real handle. Just one, one pop, hopefully, will pull this through there. And what we have here is vegetation growing up from the bottom. It's Elodea. It's clean. This bait should pop through. Let's see what happens. Oh, just popped. Now I can twitch it, pop it, and work it back to the boat. What I have effectively done is I've kept the bait in the strike zone. I didn't give it a big uh, jerk where it pops through the vegetation and it comes three or four feet away from the target. I just used a reel handle and because my rod wasn't bent and acting like a slingshot to bring that bait away from the target, it's just popped through and it stops. So if there's a inactive fish that may be sitting at the base of that vegetation, it's going to uh, have that bait very close to him, so it, it's not going to have to chase it, it's just going to come up and grab it. It's amazing with these, you know, two and three treble hooks on a lot of the different various baits, how weedless they can be when you are fishing in clean, submerged vegetation. Okay, the third thing that we'll talk about is keeping contact with the bait. As we throw out, and let's just say we're giving a pretty good pop on this particular day. As I pop it, the bait moves forward and I've got a bow in my line. That bow in your line, you're losing contact. So what I'll do is pop it and just reel slowly so that I keep contact with the bait. I'll pop it again, I'll continue reeling slowly. If I'm going to do a, 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 a kind of a reel and stop, I, can, I don't stop the reel altogether, I just keep reeling. Small twitches. If you're just doing this, all you have to do is reel at this speed. If you're doing this and you're really jerking that bait along, you gotta move it up a little faster, always keeping up with that bait. If you're doing a, uh, a retrieve and stop, you don't just stop and let the bait come to you. You stop it and then reel slowly so that if a fish comes up and taps it, then you could start in your, your, your hook set. So the three things that we want to do with the jerk bait that are extremely important, as you throw it out, it hits the water, we want to get it moving and a little twitch so that it's not in that dead man position, it pulls it up in the working position. Secondly, we want to work through uh, submerged vegetation um, efficiently so that when you get hung up you're not ripping it through, you're pointing the rod tip to the bait and popping it through the vegetation. And last but not least, we want to keep contact with the bait. As we're doing the individual twitches and jerks and reels, we want to continue reeling with the reel so that we can feel what's going on with that bait. If you can master those three little techniques, you're going to catch a lot more fish when it comes to jerk bait fishing. So there's three ways to fish this bank, depending on how they're setting up uh, according to tide. At a high tide like we have right now, I'll pull in real close, right in the trough, and I'll make a long cast and just pull it right down the trough. If I'm not catching fish in the trough, I'll pull out a little bit and I'll position the boat right over vegetation, and I'll throw out a little deeper, and I'll try to work that vegetation. This is where it's really important to keep contact with the bait so that when you're touching the tops of the um, the Elodea and different types of submerged veg vegetation, you know it's there and you know how to, uh, to uh, use the, you know, the, the real pop to get it through the vegetation. 
If I'm not picking up anything there, I'll throw out on the outside edge of that. So three different positions that I will keep the boat in. Either in the trough, casting way up on the bank, right over the vegetation, which will be out six or eight feet from the bank, and then ripping this thing through, um, through uh, the vegetation. Or I'll put my boat right on the outside edge of the vegetation and fish that, at that outside edge. Now another thing you could do is pull your boat offshore a little further. You're going to cast right up next to shore. You're going to get two or three little pops, twitches and jerks through the trough. Then you're going to hit some submerged vegetation. You're going to work it slowly through there and pop it through the vegetation. Then as it gets on the outside edge, then you'll start moving it back towards the boat. A lot of times this is a good retrieve when there's stripers in the system because um, the stripers a lot of times will hold right on the outside edge of the vegetation. So by pulling offshore and getting that bait right next to shore, you've got three or four foot of the trough where it's primarily going to be largemouth, right over the vegetation where it's primarily going to be largemouth, and then on the outside edge of that vegetation, you might get a, a, a largemouth coming out from the vegetation or you may have a striper that's moving on the outside and picking it up as it comes to the outside edge. So guys, I know that's a lot to digest. Um, if I didn't explain something right or you have a question, don't be afraid to send me a, a Gmail at scooper9561032 at gmail.com. I try to answer all of the uh, uh, questions that I have. So if I didn't explain something quite right, hit me up on my Gmail and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit and see if we can't get you straightened out. So I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. And uh, I think if you can master some of the things that we talked about today, you're going to find that you're going to catch a lot more uh, fish on these jerk baits. So thanks a lot again for watching, and until the next video, we'll see you guys on the river.